Welcome back. Let's go ahead and get the day started off right with chapter 32. After these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah and besieged the fortified cities and thought to break into them for himself. Now when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to make war on Jerusalem, he decided with his officers and his warriors to cut off the supply of water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. So many people assembled and stopped up all the springs in the stream which flowed through the region, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find abundant water? And he took courage and rebuilt all the wall that had been broken down and erected towers on it, and built another outside wall and strengthened the Milo in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in great number. He appointed military officers over the people and gathered them to him in the square at the city gate and spoke encouragingly to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Assyria, nor because of all the horde that is with him. For the one with us is greater than the one with him. With him is only an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Same thing today. And the people relied on the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this, Sennacherib, uh, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem while he was besieging Lachish with all his forces with him against Hezekiah, king of Judah, and against all Judah who were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, On what are you trusting that you are remaining in Jerusalem under siege? Is not Hezekiah misleading you to give yourselves over to die by hunger and thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and said to Judah and Jerusalem, You shall worship before one altar, and on it you shall burn incense? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of the lands able at all to deliver their land from my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations, which my fathers utterly destroyed, who could deliver his people out of my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you from my hand? Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or mislead you like this, and do not believe him. For no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? His servants spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to insult the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of the lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. They called this out with a loud voice in the language of Judah to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to frighten and terrify them, so that they might take the city. Plucking the fur of a grizzly bear. They spoke of the God of Jerusalem as of the gods of the peoples of the earth, the work of men's hands. But King Hezekiah and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, prayed about this and cried out to heaven, and the Lord sent an angel who destroyed every mighty warrior, commander, and officer in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned in shame to his own land. And when he had entered the temple of his God, some of his own children killed him there with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many were bringing gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and choice presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. In those days, Hezekiah became mortally ill, and he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah gave no return for the benefit he received, because his heart was proud. Therefore, wrath came on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. Man, Hezekiah, so close. And this whole event um, was explained in detail back in 2 Kings chapter 20. All right, verse 26. However, Hezekiah humbled the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come on them in the days of Hezekiah. Now Hezekiah had immense riches and honor, and he made for himself treasuries for silver, gold, precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuable articles, storehouses also for the produce of grain, wine, and oil, pens for all kinds of cattle and sheepfolds for the flocks. He made cities for himself and acquired flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very great wealth. 
It was Hezekiah who stopped the upper outlet of the waters of Gihon and directed them to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all that he did. Even in the matter of the envoys of the rulers of Babylon, who sent to him to inquire of the wonder that had happened in the land, God left him alone only to test him, that he might know all that was in his heart. And an envoy was a person delegated to represent one government in its dealings with another government. All right, verse 32. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his deeds of devotion, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper section of the tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death. And his son Manasseh became king in his place. So a few mistakes here and there, like any of us would, uh, but Hezekiah was, you know what, a pretty faithful, godly man. So let's praise the Lord for that, and let's uh, go ahead and pray it out. Lord, we thank you for another day. Thank you for sharing the story in the life of Hezekiah and how mostly uh, he was obedient to throughout his entire life. And may we learn from how in times of difficulty he would turn to you, uh, seek you in prayer for wisdom, and may we learn to do the same. Lord, I pray that in this day, uh, you would give us wisdom and that you would guide us uh, as everything comes at us. Help us to stand upright, uh, honorable and true to your word, um, walking in righteousness and holiness, no matter what comes at us. But we absolutely need your guidance and assistance in your spirit uh, to do so. So, <clears throat> Lord, we ask that your spirit would lead us in this day, deliver us from evil and temptation, and uh, help us to love and treat each other with uh, patience and kindness, uh, but also with truth. I ask that you continue blessing our families and, and uh, helping those within our families who may not know you or are kind of on the fence um, or need to repent of certain situations. Lord, we pray for those individuals. I ask that each one of us here with me right now would uh, reflect upon their own lives and bring anything to you that they need to lay before you in repentance as well. Um, please again continue being with our country right now as we go through all this uncertainty. Uh, pray that your will would be first and foremost to usher in your kingdom and after that Lord just uh, whatever needs to be done in the life of our president, our you know military, uh, everybody involved in the grand, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a scheme or plan that you have, I pray that uh, your will be done. And guide us as we go forward. Thank you for this time together. And I pray that you would bless my friends and family with me in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, thank you so much and have a good one. God bless you.